Peace. Hotep. Today is the 22nd of October. Canaan Land Moore's class. Today's class is um, really just dealing with not taking that subordinate passive position, right? You can't take the passive approach. So put down that blue pill. Put down the blue pill and think before you take that pill right because the red pills your freedom right fez is red flags red right that's where you're going to get out of this thing the blue pill is you're on ice and if you're on ice that means you're connected to the to the construct and pretty much you know it's it's king alfred plan for you pretty much right? that's that's the option right if you haven't if you haven't checked it out you know just do your little internet research or whatever on king alfred plan right so that's the blue pill side so that's not in your best interest right now, it might appear the, the 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 appearance is that you know what's the benefit of what we're saying opposed to what everybody else is saying right and the, there's only one benefit and the only benefit is that you're taking responsibility in any other whatever that people belong to they never have to take responsibility they have some entity man woman whatever right that is going to hold their sins for them right until they graduate to the level where you know they can do okay well with this you're graduated so it's now it's time to get to that next level and you know what I mean no playing around right so leave the blue pill alone right and I tell you because we're Moors right when we say leave the blue pill alone we're talking about all the things that got you into this situation that you're in right now as quote unquote a people right and what we've never done to remedy that and the only thing that we never did only thing we never did is take responsibility for what we created so put on the blue pill because that is your that is your personal bullet in the gun that you're putting to your own head by taking the blue pill right so you have three positions you can take the blue pill right you could stay in the neutral and just be in the chair chilling and you and morpheus will just build on this these two pills forever right for eternity and you just tease you tease you for the rest of your life just about you know what's on the red pill side and then there's taking responsibility and knowing that you've had questions you have questions there's gonna be questions still and the answers are out there nobody stole your history nobody you know beat Christianity into you nobody took the position of directly having the so-called melanin dominant people under subjugation they did that to themselves 
and I'm speaking they because I'm not involved in that. Neo black Africa and all that stuff, people can keep that if they want that. That's up to them, right? We're over here, we're building the ark. And either you're gonna get on the ark or bang on the door. And that's just what it is. You took the blue pill. You, did the, you didn't hear what the man said, right? This is your last chance. This is your last chance. There's no options after this, right? The date's 10-22, 2013. This is the last chance. That's right? Don't take the blue pill because we're not throwing life rafts after this. 500 videos on YouTube of classes, right? And crap debates and foolishness have, you know, thousands of hits or whatever. Right? And the so-called conscious people we're not talking about the dead people. We're talking about these are people who say that they are conscious, they know their self. Right? So, this is the last chance. We'll put up whatever information that we got to put up today to, you know, let our people know what's what. Because after today, we're going to, you know, up the ante. And if you got questions, you got 500 videos you go look at. To go find the answer because I'm pretty sure your question is in one of those videos, guaranteed. Right? And it's not just like me, you know, there's Taj up there, there's Aleem up there, there's Nature up there, there's Jabbar up there, there's there's Abdullah up there, there's um, Jose Pimenta Bay up there. There's th that's all what we provided to try to assist people. To, to get a clear understanding of nationality and birth rights. So everything's already there, everything's already done, you know what I mean? Seal package up, so it's there. If you want to go research, do whatever, watch 500 videos over there, right? And Moors, there are us active Moors, you know, we've been on the, on the, um, what do we call this? Class, stream, whatever, you know what I mean? That's been following along, or whatever. From going so next week starting next week is a whole different perspective when we're coming with the information. No more show people pictures and all this stuff. We're in, right, we're starting to get down to where we're supposed to get down to, because it's after today we already know who's down and who's not down. Who took red pill? Who took blue pill? And neutral people, then they could just be neutral, and you know they're not gonna understand what's going on anyways, right? So today's news. Um. NSA and France having issues, right? President Barack Obama called French President Francois Hollande on Monday and discussed France's anger over reported aggressive surveillance tactics by the National Security Agency, right? And at the top of the thing it says U.S. surveillance of 70 million phone calls unacceptable says France right these are allies bickering if we want to talk about how many more is always bickering how come you guys aren't talking about bickering going on with these corporate states around here right same bickering but you're gonna look at the moors and point fingers at the moors but you're not gonna point fingers at these clowns right here that are bickering that this man that the president of the u.s corporation is personally calling the president of the french corporation about surveillance right their allies their their boys right Teacher dies protecting students from shooter. <laughs> right? Family members have identified the staff member killed as math teacher Michael Lansbury, 45. He was a military veteran who leaves behind a wife and two stepdaughters, said his sister-in-law, 
Shanda Landsberg. And you can just go do whatever research you want to do about it. Right? So, Sparks, Nevada. There's this school shooting again. You know what I mean? The, 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 new, the new tactic of fear. Right? Or, are they really telling you that we're implementing King Alfred plan right now. So, you make a choice of what you want to do. That's our school that we built. We don't care about your children's whatever because you already know we got RFD chips and all that in the school. We got scanners in the school. We got teachers who don't care. 3.30, they're just running out the door in the school. So they already know that they, that they don't care, right? But we still, we still go there, you know what I mean, supporting this fraud. The reason why we're talking about this is because of the shutdown. How is the shutdown related to school shooting? Well, the biggest news during the shutdown for people who are constitutionalists, right? People who study the Constitution of the United States of America Republic. The constitutionalists of this great republic have been keeping an eye on the veterans who, at this point, are the biggest fighters for constitutional rights since the U.S. shutdown. Because the U.S. shutdown means that the memorial for the veterans is also closed. Now, military people are constitutionalists, right? They are oath to the Constitution and all that. So, we're just putting this out there, you know, for all the military people that are constitutionalists, mm -hmm. right, that understand that, you know, there's been a, a corporate takeover of this great republic, and that they have an oath to uphold the constitution, right, and in them upholding their oath to the constitution, they, you know, take off their um military uniform and they blend with the common people because everybody knows that the veterans are common people and they want peace on earth just like everybody else that's why they went and did what they did right our problem with that is we shouldn't have went and go fighting anywhere we should have just chilled and let them go take care of their own fight because like Muhammad Ali told us and I'm going over there killing my brown brothers and sisters when you are here abusing me and I'm not fighting you. Alright? So, honors to the constitutionalists and also to uh, math teacher Michael Lansbury, right? A military veteran who passed away during that school shooting in Sparks, Nevada. All right. So Rihanna now, right? She had show in Dubai now with the Emirates. Okay. So she had to play the role there under orders of the Emirates. She's not playing this role because oh yeah, you know she's studying more science, so she's now you know accepted among the conscious community because she's standing in front of a mosque wearing a hijab so that means that she's a more forget that crap right the emirates told her the emirates told her where you are right now is a mosque and it's sacred ground right now so you have to cover up your hair when you come in here and she said okay fine and then she goes in there and she's posing up, right? You know, the fashion foolishness, right? Posing up on an all white floor and then she's wearing all black, right? In the mosque. And now the Emirates are mad, right? The Emirates are mad. Rihanna strikes a pose, gets the boot. 
right? So they kicked her ass out the mosque because she's up in their pose. Who knows what kind of poses she was doing up in the mosque? But these guys said, you know what? We're not, we're not even having that. So you need to get the hell out of the mosque right now. You know? And you know, everything else happened. She tweeted about it. You, you haven't heard nothing. You haven't heard her tweet nothing about getting her ass kicked out of the mosque yet. So keep your eyes out for the tweets from Rihanna about when she got kicked out of the mosque fronting to be Muslim because she's a Muslim Asiatic of the Americas because she's from so-called West Indies so so she has a birthright and she's going over there to go pose up with those foreigners to Islam right which which brings us to the grand man the Prophet Noble Drew Ali who in our authority which in the back right our authority right our authority You're not some Muslim authority from Saudi Arabia or some Arab Muslim Shiite Sunni authority right this is Noble Drew Ali's authority right that he transferred to us the Moorish Holy Temple of Science deriving its power and authority from the great Quran of Muhammad not the great Quran of Islam the great Quran of Muhammad because real true Islam is Muhammadism and go ask a Sunni or Shiite that and don't be mad if they don't accept that that's why they're Sunni or Shiite because they don't want to be Sufis which are the Moors documented fact go ask go ask a Muslim practicing Salat doing Muslim run around square Egyptian buildings and kissing stones talk about their saved people go ask them about Mohammedism and watch them so there's a difference take your Quran and take their Quran and Tell, try to try to push your Quran on them like they try to push their Quran on you and see if you get anywhere right because everybody's job everybody's job is to get you to take the blue pill now once you take the blue pill you took the blue pill that's voluntary and if that's voluntary then <laughs> ain't nobody to blame but you you should have took responsibility took the red pill and at least see how far the rabbit hole goes because you already know the rabbit hole government shut down all types of madness going on right now all right the moorish national republic the moorish divine and national movement of the world aboriginal and indigenous natural peoples of northwest amexum north america public notice to all public servant governors at all www.moorishnationpublicrecords.com slash the hyphen moorish hyphen national hyphen republic dot html april 13th 2011 so since 2011 a group of moors took it on their self right to address the international community uh, international justice court the hague netherlands honorable barack obama white house washington dc United States Justice Department, United States Attorney General Eric H. Holder, U.S. Department of Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood, U.S. Secretary Department of State, U United States Department of State Hillary Rodman Clinton, Interpol, Lyon France, Great Seal National Association of Morris Affairs, Minister A.L. United States of America, Honorable President Barack Obama, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington, blah, blah. Greetings from the Moorish Nation. Right? So this is how you know active Moors that work in your favor. Active Moors who are working in your favor, for all you blue pill poppers, right? I love the blue pill. Right? Like we told you, it's the last chance. So even if you took the blue pill, you could still get out of something if you understand what's going on if you don't then and enjoy brutal life active mores mores that are active mores that are for the people right because active mores know that they're one of the people so mores who are for the people right 
When they do things, they do things for the nation. They don't do things for the more science temple or the more holy temple of science or the great seal whatever or the this they do it for the nation because there is a nation it does exist it is something that is documented as fact and can be researched right speaking about the nation of the Moors in the Americas right there's ample amounts of evidence about dark-skinned people being in the Americas for a long time right and all those dark-skinned people in modern time the only standing they have lawfully politically socially etc is Moors. Nothing else is going to get you what you want or what you seek. And if you do get it, they only did it because you abandoned your birthright. So they give you a little benefit for being an abandoner. Because you're helping them. So if you're assisting them, then you're going to have to, you know, you get your cut. You get your piece of the booty. Right? So when you research and you know like like we we continue to, to put this out there right that if it's not foundation right if it's not foundation foundation are moors that have the prophet up front right they don't care about their own personal accolades and and what title they call themselves it's all about letting the people know about Prophet Noble Juali and the fact that he brought something for them that they don't have to pay for. That all they got to do is just pick it up and exercise it and that's it. You don't need papers, you don't need cards, you don't need anything. You just pick it up, exercise it. Yeah, but what happens if... Forget about what happens if. But what happens if is is slave mentality. You know, You don't think... You know, before I have this juice, but what happens if I choke on the juice and die drinking juice? It's not, it's not you're not worried about it. So why are you worried with this? Right? If this is something gravitating with you in your heart, if this is gravitating with you in your heart, right? If you see the classes that we do, if you hear, you know, other more speak, and this information is resonate with you on a high frequency, it's it's probably past time that you took that red pill you should have already been had the thing taken out went through the you know what I mean and getting dried off right you're kind of behind if you're if, if, if you see that this is what it is right don't be fooled by Moors get arrested Moors in the news or whatever Moors in don't even don't even go there because all that is irrelevant all that has no bearing on your nationality and your birthrights all that is distractions from the prophet and once they get you distracted from the prophet they got you game's over there's no next move after that once you get distracted from the prophet well, game's over next start over scratch game you're 0 and 500 right so active mores mores that are active they have the prophet up front right they're not worried about their title and the I'm a grand sheik and grand governor and you know I have the badge with the ribbon that has the things on the bottom it's all irrelevant fezes no fezes or whatever who cares it's birthrights birthrights isn't something tangible physical we can hold on to right birthrights is ethereal so nothing to even right um, and again just to show you that you're behind go on YouTube and make sure you watch Imhotep the Moor tells it as a man go watch that Imhotep the Moor tells it as a man go watch that on YouTube right um, there was there was um, yo it's open mm -hmm. There was um, two questions that we had. 
There was um, two questions. First question was, why nationality and not thinking militarily? Right? Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to go on YouTube. You're going to watch uh, a few, you know, little posts. Right? But Brother Bokari Battle Bay, right, ex military, has a video on there, right, where he's talking about all the stuff that he's expert in or whatever, right. So he's gonna go down the list, yeah, well, there's this and this and this and the thing and things you never even heard of or whatever, right. He used to be on their side, right. So now he's nationalizing all. And he's giving us the information as to what they have. Now when we look around, what we have militarily, and we're not talking about, you know, guerrilla warfare. You know, show me shanks and, you know, right? I'm saying, what do we have militarily? Right? right? Exactly, right? Crickets. Okay? Because we don't have anything. So, let's not even talk about military with these people. Because they're... Police is military. Prison is military. That's concentration camp. Man on the corner with the common people with a gun. That's military. That's martial law. Peace officers don't carry weapons. If you go read their, their stuff, if you go read their stuff, their stuff will tell you that peace officers don't carry weapons. Because weapons are military. And all these, they're just around the common people. Right? Um, checkpoints, you know, borders, whatever. It's military. So we've been under, but, you know, when we look, when we think about it, right? When we say, oh, slave in the, we're slave in the, the nations of the world. Religions. Well, religion is military. Religion's not go to church. Religion's military. So, their whole approach, their whole direction towards us has always been military. And ours has been march, picket, whatever, whatever, whatever. So, we already lose. So, let's not go military. Right? Let's go wisdom let's go i self law master because what they have militarily we have in our nationality among other things because you know with our nationality now moors that say they're moorish american right and understand about their nationality and birthrights and if there's an individual of the nation that is a black belt and we make calls all over the country and we find all these people, right, and we gather them all up being that they're part of the, the Moorish nation, right, and they forget whatever it is that they had and whatever they do and, you know what I mean, they devote their time to the cause. You know what I call the monks do? And they forget all their stuff, all their family and everything. And then they just go up in the Shaolin Temple for 30 years. And nobody sees hairs from them. Right? That's their, if that's their mentality, then we'll be military. We'll be able to have a military under the guise of religion like the monks do. And the uh, Sikhs do. Who they walk around with their daggers. That's military. Or up here. And brothers getting nine years for possession of a gat and you have a man with a four foot sword on the street walking around with people but you know if he's not using that to harm anybody or violate anybody's rights then 
he has a right to have that right so forget militarily nationality and birthrights right there's there's no need for us to right because you know the obvious you know if we're for noble Drali, he said you know love instead of hate so you know military is hate and we don't need to even deal with military but not even dealing with the obvious just dealing with other stuff right um and then the second question was how to stop a garden sheep right you're not going to stop a garden sheep because a garden sheep is a contract that you agree to so you know you you're, you're not going to heal just because you put a band-aid on but give it a little time right and if you apply what you have to to the cut and whatever you know it'll it'll heal right same thing with all these problems that we have that we get into more science with these problems and immediately try to apply these pro these this more science to the problems wrong because you're not you're not going to get what you expect to get applying this information to your problems it's going to come from some angle that you didn't even expect because when you get on this information and you still start dealing with these people with regard to garnishes and things of that nature they don't know how to deal with it because they've never dealt with anybody dealing with them on this level before with this degree of information right so first thing we have to do is we'll go to our Black's Law Dictionary right and garnish money paid in English law money paid by a prisoner to his fellow prisoners on his entrance into prison right that's one meaning for garnish right Garnish, to warn or summon, to issue process of garnishment against a person. Right? So, that's the one that we're going to go with. The verb of garnish, not the noun of garnish. Right? So, they're, they're taking a verb, right? They're taking a verb and using that as the basis as to how they're going to administer this thing called garnishment right remember they're not using a noun they're using a verb right so if you're taking notes that's one strike against them right violation of language right garnishy one garnished so this is for the individual that asked the question the person who's getting garnished is the garnishy one garnished a person against whom process of garnishment is issued one who has money or property in his possession belonging to a defendant okay so one who has money or property in his possession belonging to a defendant right or who owes the defendant a debt which money property or debt is attached in his hands with notice to him not to deliver or pay it over until the result of the suit be ascertained. So the garnishee, the person who's getting garnished, right, is one garnished, a person. So right there it's letting you know that the garnish E is a corporation. And then you're taking notes, then you put two strikes right there, and then you circle that. Right? Because we're, we're building up to how we're going to deal with the garnishment. Right? Garnishment. A warning to a person in whose hands the effects of another are attached. Not to pay the money or deliver the property of the defendant in his hands to him. But to appear and answer the plaintiff's suit. A statutory proceeding whereby persons, property, money, or credits in possession or under control of or owing by another are applied to payment of former's debt to third person by proper statutory process against debtor and garnishee.
Now, we go to trusty because if somebody's being garnished and they're making the claim that the garnishee is one who has money or property, right, possession, in his possession, belonging to a defendant. The defendant is the so-called trustee who's taking his defendant position, right, and putting it on the Aboriginal indigenous people who are classified as persons, right, which means now they're liable because the trustee or the person upon appointed or required by law to execute a trust. So the person required by law to execute the trust, right, is telling somebody else, a third party, that you can go and take this individual's wages, which a wage and income are two different things. A wage especially if it's pecuniary wages right pecuniary wages can't be taxed only income could be taxed because income is profits so you're not gonna stop a garnishee your mentality is now that I'm being garnished because I had no degree of knowledge with regard to what these people are doing and the game that they're running right now that I have this information I'm gonna let the garnishy continue to happen because you know what are you gonna do right but you're gonna deal with them not like how you dealt with them before you're gonna deal with them now by sending them documented like documented so things written demanding them for answers with regard to their position and how are they a trustee but at the same time benefiting because if they're taking the position of saying I'm the garnisher they're getting paid to do that that's not just something that they're that's a separate position that they're taking and all these things are things you're gonna point out in your writ to them and you're gonna put make sure because don't be trying to use that name that they sent you the garnishy order in to fight them you better have nationality first and foremost in the front of your mind before you even start writing anything to anybody free national name X relation straw name right just go to rvbaypublications.com X relation and you'll get or look up X relation in law dictionary we got you know stuff to do but you know I already answered the question for the brother but we're just putting it out there I, I talked to him earlier today we're just putting it out there so people could understand the perspective of how they're supposed to look at this never look at this like you have a problem and you're trying to get out of it with this information like that's not you already lost right because by by saying that you're implying that when you did contract with these colonizers or whatever right you're implying to them that it didn't matter contract yeah sure I'll sign that or whatever you know you were reserving your rights back then now all of a sudden you're reserving your rights right so don't deal with them from the perspective of you don't know what this is even if you don't know you better tap into your cellular memory and pull up answers when they come at you because they're going to come at you on angles that you don't know why because they have your chart 
and they have Google Chrome or Google Earth and they could they know where everybody is remember France right 700 million right 70 million phone calls hacked 70 million phone calls hacked listen to or whatever so they know what everybody's doing and then that's why it's about being on more science don't worry about them taping you because we have nothing to hide we're dealing with the law what what's the problem tape all you want matter of fact put, put me on CNN use a clip of one of these and put it on CNN right I bet you they never do it because everything we deal with is law and they can't afford for having any of this information get out right and then that's why they're going to put up all this whatever so all that stuff will have million views and this will have 30 40 500 because they don't want people on this information you can go check you could even you could go check right now and there's some of the videos that are blocked in other countries right like there's videos that are blocked in other countries you know because the words getting out right so once again this is your last chance after this there's no turning back you take the blue pill the story ends you wake up in your bed and you can believe anything that you want I don't care doesn't matter or take the red pill stay in Wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes remember remember all I'm offering is the truth nothing more all right remember all the offering is the truth and nothing more anything else you want you gotta go dig that up yourself because all we have to offer is the truth hip-hop inquirer Renee Gardner had an article about Malik Zulu Shabazz stepping down right stepping down from the pedestal of the new Black Panther Party and word on the street it's because of you know the debate that he had with Polite right in that debate he did the same thing that Khalid Muhammad did proclaimed that he was a more right with confidence not shaky you know like some people what's your nationality uh, uh, Moorish American uh, none of that right give honors to Noble Juali give honors to the Moroccan Empire and that he knew what it was Malik Zulu Shabazz X X head of the new Black Panther Party right you a Muslim Khalid yes I am I'm a Moor Islam oh yeah and he said Islam to all the Moors so if you didn't get to check the the post um, Malik Zulu Shabazz polite debate part one or one or something but there's a one in there right and go get your Islam from Malik Zulu Shabazz who's new Black Panther Party officer of the court ex new Black Panther Party head officer of the court but came out in his last debate because obviously this is last debate if he's stepping down as new Black Panther Party head he's not going to be debating none of these people anymore so at his last debate just like Khalid's last lecture made the proclamation that he's a more he took the red pill Khalid took the red pill and 
Malik Zulu Shabazz took the red pill. And El Haj Malik Shabazz took the red pill. It's not a joke, yo. Like Malik Zulu Shabazz took the red pill. Right? And you know that and, and notice, notice, right? How hush it was when he said it. Notice how all those yeah get them and clapping and black power and whatever people when he said Islam to the Moors and recognized Noble Ali, the Moroccan Empire and said that he was a Moor. This is from my um, Nation Islam Moors, brothers and sisters, who are um, um, forced <laughs> to accept Scientology, right? When the NOI came out of the Moor Science Temple of America. A message for black people. If Scientology were to be used by black people of America, don't forget, NOI calls themselves black people. The gains for which they have striven so hard in the social world will be guaranteed. Scientology can increase intelligence, improve personality, and bring personal power and alertness to any person it is applied. It may seem at first a difficult subject, but it is not. It is far easier than common school subjects. Many black people have already studied it to a professional level. The gates of Scientology are open wide to black people. A professional Scientologist has more social standing and ability to help than any other professional field. If black people even on a part-time basis studied it, and used it upon other black people if black centers were to set up in America for black people the standard ability social activity and intelligence would be increased far beyond any future possible loss look into Scientology and use it to help your own people let them truly walk in the Sun and take their place amongst the mo most brilliant people of earth L Ron Hubbard that's from the horse's mouth right that's from the mm -hmm. horse's mouth so let's go to our boy let's go to our boy peter moon Let's go to our boy Peter Moon. Alright. We already read this, but we're just putting it out there just because we just had talked about Ron L. Hubbard quick fast, right? Any visible thread of the original Moorish Empire had been virtually extinguished or gone underground by the time Nova Juali, then known as Timothy Drew, was born into this world. His fabled initiation in Egypt occurred just about the time L. Ron Hubbard was born. Until I actually composed this book, I would have been predisposed to connect the character of Drew Ali with either L. Ron Hubbard or the research he con conducted on the subject of freedom and oppression. In view of my own experiences with relation to this book, however, the quantum juxtaposition of those two characters stands out like fireworks. Hubbard's work was primarily about the imprisonment and freedom of the spirit. Although Ali and Hubbard might not appear connected at first glance, there is quite a, a rhyme and rhythm between the two. On the surface, Ali's work might be misinterpreted to appeal to primarily a displaced people and cultural heritage. As my friend Hamza Bey ta has taught me, the more you learn about the etymology of the word more, the more you realize that it is a spiritual identity that ultimately has very little to do with racial or cultural identity. The original Moors had no distinction along racial lines. 
This was actually an inventive distinction to sow seeds of discord among people and to facilitate, facilitate the disruption of what might best be termed your own infinite spiritual potential. The de-oppression work done by L. Ron Hubbard was the first time he ever initiated techniques that literally began to reach out and restructure the environment on a wholesale basis. It began with the Sea Org itself and then the Scientology community. But it was spreading with the wild abandoned with the wild abandon of a forest fire before the fire department came to put it out. As I said, the seeds of this de oppression technology were said to be based upon the most fundamental purpose of life itself. How Noble Drawley fits into this equation at first glance might not be as exotic as what I have just said. As the story develops, however, it might be viewed as more exotic. In the end, however, they are both part and parcel of the same principle, declaring your lost heritage as a free and infinite being. The fact that you have been able to read what I have just written is only by the thinnest of threads, but of which you must already read about in this book. Only very few Sea Org members and virtually no Scientologists ever known about this de-oppression principle, let alone practice it. There is also a, a contingent of people who left the church who knew about this but are not in any position for various reasons to publish anything on it. Quite amazingly, it has nothing, it has not shown up on any internet posting boards or Scientology his histories. On the other hand, you can make an extensive study of the French Revolution and pretty much come up with the same principles. This is what L. L. Ron Hubbard did. My putting it forth into consciousness is just like water leaking through. Water is very powerful, even in small doses. It can bore a hole through, a granite, through granite. Just as Noble Drawley tried to lift the veil of deception from the Moors and their heritage, so did L. Ron Hubbard try to lift the veil of deception from spiritual beings and their true nature. It is therefore not really ironic that by giving a proper and respectful funeral service for Ron, L. Ron Hubbard, I literally gated the Moorish temple into my life. To remind you, when L.R.H. wrote his work on oppression, he stated that the only place left in the world with even a vestigial, vestigial element of freedom was the United States. This can now be attributed directly to the Moors. None of this would be known if it were not for Drew Ali and the dynamic movement he created which began to flourish and reach critical mass in 1929. The recognition and uncovering of oppression of the Moors is part and parcel of delivering the best promises of what Scientology in its most exalted aspects had to offer. The growth resulting from these experiences led me to write Synchronicity and the Seventh Seal, which ultimately explains the greatest mystery underlying Western esotericism and the secret formula upon which Christianity was based before being badly distorted. This is the real Da Vinci Code, which gave rise to the Italian Renaissance and which was secretly influenced by the Moors. We'll just stop there just because, you know, I mean, we got a rep. Montauk Book of the Dead, Peter Moon, which is in the Library of the Congress. So, all these people know what's good about your birthright. Everybody took the red pill. Even Peter Moon took the red pill. Because if you go check out Iron Sheet 3, uh, Divine and National Music, there's a sample on there of Brother Azariah at a class or a meeting. And Peter Moon came in, fez up and all that. Right? Telling telling them, European, telling them about some um some big statue of a brother, right? And Jews or somebody is or Masons or somebody is pretty much like telling Moors that, you know, <laughs> you're you're what it is. Like you're what it is. There's nothing other than what what it is, what you say. Whatever you say goes. And everybody's waiting for us to stand up. Right? Um, you're also going to go go read um, the speech from Barack Obama 
June 4th, 2009 at Cairo University, right? And how he's going outside the country talking about, you know, um, as a student of history, I also know civilization's debt to Islam. It was Islam at places like Al-Azhar that carried the light of learning through so many centuries, paving the way for Europe's renaissance and enlightenment. It was innovation in Muslim communities. It was innovation in Muslim communities that developed the order of algebra, our magnetic compass and tools of navigation, our mastery of pens and printing, our understanding of how disease spreads and how it can be healed. Islamic culture has given us majestic arches and soaring spires, timeless poetry and cherished music, elegant calligraphy and places of peaceful contemplation. And throughout history, Islam has demonstrated through words and deeds the possibilities of religious tolerance and racial equality. I also know that Islam has always been a part of America's story. The first nation to recognize my country was Morocco. In signing the Treaty of Tripoli in 1796, our second president, John Adams, wrote, The United States has itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. And there, there's, there's something for you right there, Moors. Uh, what are we going to use? What could we use to get out of whatever? It says right there, The United States has itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. And because they're talking about Morocco and treaties, we know they're not talking about some Shiite, Sunni Muslims or whatever, praying and all that. They're talking about Muslims. They're talking about the Moors of the North Gate who were the ones that established this, this um, great republic, right? That everybody wants back after they sold it out to international interests. Now everybody's crying want memorials to be open and you know what I mean right when they gave it up you could have you should, should have just stop tell calling the Moors black and Negro and colored now, now I'm not talking Europeans I'm talking about th these niggers on our side who's been telling these people that they're not Moors when Barack Obama is going to goddamn Cairo University and expressing right to people outside of this country his degree of knowledge because he's a student of history he said so himself and since our founding american muslims right so Amer american muslims so he's not talking about no arab muslims american are the copper tone people indigenous aboriginal autochthonous people of the americas and like we said, Muslims are Moors, Muslims. They're, not, they're, they're saying Muslims as code, right? So hold on, hold on, hold on on the, on the blue pill. Hold on. Say Muslims as code, right? So whenever you're reading history and they start talking about Muslims, automatically in your mind say Muslim and then say it out your mouth. So you can cancel that hex that they got on you. That have you thinking that you're not Muslim. Right? And that you're Christian and Buddhist and all these other things that you you can't be. Right? They have fought in our wars. They have served in our government. They have stood for civil rights. They have started businesses. They have taught at our universities. They have excelled in our sports arenas. They have won Nobel Prizes, built our tallest building, and lit the Olympic torch. And when the first Muslim American was recently elected to Congress, he took the oath to defend our Constitution using the same Holy Quran, the one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, kept in his personal library. So... Why is a Muslim American 
Muslim, Muslim, Moorish, right? Who recently was elected to Congress, taking the oath to defend the Constitution on the Holy Quran, not a Bible. If these people are so-called Christians, and they've been trying to get people to convert to Christianity during slave trades or whatever, why are they doing an oath on a Quran? That's documented fact that Thomas Jefferson had a Quran and Barack Obama just verified that Congress people are taking oaths on Qurans right but you believe whatever you want because you know choice the, the choice is yours you know pills are in front of you not me right a culture of a people is best manifested by the homage they pay to those who led with dedication and devotion to freedom and cause. Carlos Cooks by Robert Asmendeses Harris If, as the new saying goes, truth is really on its way, then perhaps black people can finally be back on their way. Which way? The way out of the confusion, contradictions, and cultural degradation or degeneration that has retarded the liberation of our people these last few years. Truth is not an abstract. It refers to sincerity, honesty, conformity to fact, correctness, exactitude, etc. Carlos Cooks was truth personified. It is also the truth that if one man can be singled out as the individual personality most responsible for the restructuring to to the resurrection on Marcus Garvey's philosophy and program, then that man is Carlos Cooks. Once again, if one man can be singled out if one man can be singled out, right? If one man, and if you didn't, if you didn't know, also go get, go get a uh, Muslim of the West, Shikran Mixidi, right? And then listen to the track where he's talking about Noble Juali with the leopard fez, because he's from Mecca, so he has access to certain things about Noble Juali that we'll never get. But just understand that there's a song by Sheikh Ran from Mecca where he's talking about Noble Juali and the Leopard Fez. If one man can be singled out as the individual personality most responsible for the resurrection on Marcus Garvey's philosophy and program then that man is Carlos Cooks. Right? Fez is up. This is Garveyite. This is Garveyite. Marcus Garvey. Repatriation. Black Star Liner. Philosophies and Opinions, Gold Book. So yeah, man, this is the last time, huh? We're gone after this. Ship, <laughs> ship set sail. We're gone after this. Garveyites. Garveyites. Pan-Africanists. Garveyites, Pan-Africanists, Rastafarians, but they're not Moors. But Carlos Cooks, who's who's the one individual who, according to research, he's the one individual that wrecked Garvey and resurrected 
the true philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. And the opinions of his philosophies were facts that were Moors. He just didn't get a chance to do his job. That's why they deported him. That's why they trumped up mail, char mail fraud charges on him. But, but praise Allah for Moors like Carlos Cooks. Who you only find two pictures of him online. This picture and the picture I showed you on the front of the book. Two pictures. No different than there's only one picture of Elijah Muhammad wearing a fez. Which is, which is, it's utterly impossible that there's only one picture. It's impossible. Right? And all these brothers got fezes on. And you're listening to people telling me dumb shit about you're not Moors. The Grand Wizard, no, not Masonry. The Grand Wizard, not long before Hulkamania ran wild in the 80s and 90s, Captain Lou Albano, Arnold Scalin, Fred Blasey, and the Grand Wizard were competing for top dog as manager of the Mahan dynasty, McMahon dynasty. Wiz managed Pampero Furpo, Luke Graham, the mass superstar Sergeant Slaughter, Professor Toro Tanaka, and Mr. Fuji, to the WWF tag titles and superstar Billy Graham to the WWF world title. The Grand Wizard. How come the Grand Wizard is dressed like a Moor, and but the Grand Wizard is a Masonic so-called title? Because the Grand Wizard is not a Masonic title, it's actually a Moorish title. And there's the Grand Wizard. Right? Goddamn wrestler manager. With a turban, with a jewel. Holding a scimitar. And just go do your research on... Grand Wizard and see how much pictures of him they got up there and every picture he has is his turban on right and if you follow wrestling you know that all the wrestlers and the managers or whatever they get to pick their characters there's not no no fit in a box thing you you come with your own idea and sell it and if McMahon's gonna be down with it then you're gonna be a superstar right freaking wrestler Moshen Ben Maimon called Moses Maimonides also known as Musa Ibn Maimon so right there, right there, right? Moshe Ben Maimon, right? So that's that's Kabbalist, right? Jewish. But then he has an Arabic name, Musa Ibn Maimon. And then Arabic has to do with the Moors, and then Jews have to do with the Moors. Because the Jews and the Moors were brothers and sisters that they kicked out of Spain or Al-Andalus and then called it Spain after they kicked the Moors out but don't Hebrew Israelites the jackasses say that they're not Moors and they have nothing to do with Moors so how come this Hebrew rabbi teacher prominent medieval Spanish Sephardic Jewish philosopher astronomer most prolific and influential Torah scholar and physician of the Middle Ages is sitting up in here with a turban on and a fez on underneath. And and no everybody talk debate Hebrew Israelites about dumb shit. How about you just don't debate them? Because here's proof, documented fact, that the Jews know about the history of the Moors. 
Well, goddamn, there's Moore's Gate in Jerusalem. There's Moore's Gate in Jerusalem. Everything is yours if you take that red pill. If you take that blue pill, you abandon all of this. And you give it to them. See how they see how he looks? See the straight nose or whatever? And the no lips? You know why he's like that? Because you abandoned your birthright. So he picked it up. And now he's parading around with your stuff. Right? And he's not wrong. Honors to the rabbi for repping it. You better rep it if you're going to call yourself rabbi and hold titles of astronomer and philosopher and all that. You better, you better have your turban and your fez on and rep that properly. Show these Negroes out here that this is their birthright that, you, that you're exercising. Right? Like how Brother Taj calls it, the clip sovereignty. You know? Right? Joseph Ben Ifra, oh, another one, another one, turban and fez up. Turban and fez, the Jewish philosopher and all that. Torah scholar. Right? See the nose right there? That doesn't look like our nose. See the lips right there? See the no lips? Right? Why? Because you gave up your birthright. And he picked it up. And he's using it. And he's not wrong. Because he took the red pill. He's unplugged from the matrix. That's why they rule the world. They're not involved in the matrix. They're involved in raping everybody who's down with the matrix. These are Jews. Jews who everybody that says Jewish, they know these guys. These, this is their like high level crew. But we're not going to say that we're Moors. Well, now we, Negro black color people. African, Pan-Africans, Garveyites, Rastafarians, gods and earths and all that. Everybody has your birthright. Running around the world with it. Benefiting. Off your birthright that you don't want. And then you're blaming them. Right? Oh yeah, let me just... Get with, with, with the 813. Let's get with the Moors. Islam to all the Moors in the chat. You already know. Right? Um, Rabbi Naftoli Trop. Rabbi Naftoli. Right? There's a rabbi repping his tarbush. Right? With his Moors beard and mustache. Right? Yeah, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Bags under his eyes from studying your more science. Yeah, that that you don't want. Right? And don't get it twisted, huh? They're studying more science. That's why they're wearing fezes and turbans. Tarbushes. Have Allah on their fez, Islam on their fez, saying that they're heads of government, but they're taking oaths on the Quran because they're studying more science, right? I just wanted to put this up there. Just everybody, just jacking your jacking your ish, right? This is a Morocco Royal Guard, Morocco Royal Guard, Mufti. Repping it. Five point star, all that. Right? Everybody got your birthright. Here's a good one. Brother in Morocco. Fez up. Little brother too. Right? Fez is up. It's your birthright. It's just sitting on the stoop. Fez is up. Why are you dressing up, going to the costume ball to wear your fez? 
or you carry your fez to the temple in a bag like that 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 is some 1913 stuff because Nobu Ali knew that Moors weren't ready so don't even wear your fez because as soon as you get asked a question you're not even going to know what the hell to say because only a handful of y'all are going to be saved and I'm going to have fingers left over so carry your fez to the temple this is 2013 Moors know about their birthright we've been studying it's not some joke thing to us just like, just like Peter Moon said this is a spiritual thing and Rick Smith said it this is a spiritual thing and both of them are Europeans right brother repping it right Morocco again no turbans up fez is up what else is there to be on you know and and again these aren't the the first pages on the search these are like in the 50 60 pages about Morocco that you know you bump into somebody's blog and they just got pictures from when they went to Morocco and we'll never see these things why cuz you don't study right all different ki all kind of feathers feathers that you even we haven't even seen yet right I only took this one because he has the he has the gap you know gaps run things <laughs> right fez is up with the gateway on the fez the portal the portal to the to, to the to the astral realm on the fez right you know what level is he on blue fez with a white diamond on it right moorish king i think this is in italy just a, just a statue of a Moorish king just in Italy, just Moorish king just there chilling. Yeah? Right? And the monument is constituted by the four Moors in bronze at the base of a high pedestal over which there is a statue of Ferdinando I. The Gardusha is represented with the uniform of the Order of the Knights of Santa Stefano, the military institution founded in the order to fight the Ottomans and the pirates in the Mediterranean Sea. So there it is again, all up on the blue pill. I know you listen to Seti and you know he's talking about the Turks and the Ottomans or you know people who don't look like us, but trust trust that the Ottoman Empire came out of the Moorish Empire when the Moorish Empire fell so the Ottoman Empire was really part of the Moorish Empire because the Ottoman wasn't really an empire it was a kingdom and the only reason that Ottoman became an empire is because they inherited what the Moors had right but then it wasn't as common knowledge to them as the British about the other side of the Moroccan Empire that they claimed and France and the rest of the gang right the four Moors constitute the most important part of the work the four Moors constitute the most important part of the work the emphasized torsions and grimaces of pain represent the condition of imprisonment of the subjects with great realism and elegance right so they have a picture talking about some slaves chained up and all that but they're known as the four moors doesn't that tell you that you're moors isn't does, doesn't that tell our people our people who call themselves negro black colored slaves that came from wherever that they're moors right they are moors now Keep in mind as well that, right, like I was showing you this to show you that, you know, they have the white, <laughs> right, the marble euro on the top, and then they have the bronze slaves 
on the bottom. But the monument is called the Four Moors. Doesn't even mention this guy on it. The monument is called the Four Moors. Chained up. With no clothes on. So they're telling you. They're telling you that you're Moors. And you and if you're Moors and you were enslaved, that means that you weren't slaves. It means that you're Moors. And you were put in slavery. Which means you're Moors. So stop calling yourself black and black slaves and, and all that. Because that's not who you are. Right? Definitely not who we are. We're Moors. Here's a slave, uh, a slave monument telling us that we're Moors. Right? So hold out on that blue pill. Don't go yet. Right? The Quattro Mori, the symbol of Sardina, are displayed atop the Cagliaro Municipio or Town Hall. <laughs> right? So on the town hall, on the town hall, they got the Moors head. Right? On the town hall, they have the Moors head. Like on the town hall, <laughs> right? They have a Moors head. The Moors talk about, you know, well, they're not, what if they don't recognize? What do you mean, what if they don't recognize? What if you don't recognize? Right? And this is all just information out there. Fountain of the Four Moors. Italy again. Italy has a little love for the Moors or something. You know, Fountain of the Four Moors just sitting there. You know. Not the Four Blacks or the Africans. Not the Four Ancient Egyptians. Right? Not the four Hebrew Israelites. The four Moors. Right? Intricate. Right? Intricate. Then we talk about this one on um, on the weekend. Paper out here. Right, paper out here, and this is front page right now, going all across Canada. Why are they why are they doing this? They're really just doing this because you know they have a paper and you know they're just putting out some information about this chief from Nigeria, you know, wearing a fez. Red fez. Right, chief from Nigeria wearing a fez. You know. Nigeria, you know where the slaves say they come from, you know Ghana, all that, right? Nigerian wearing a fez in a Toronto newspaper, front page. You think they're doing this just because they have a newspaper? They're doing this to send you a message. Take the red pill. Are you playing around? Let's take the red pill. Are you babying the pills? You already know that you, we, we've been in the matrix and nothing's not going on in the matrix. So what are we going to do? Continue playing around with this thing? We know the matrix ain't nothing's going on for the matrix. You still playing around with this? Take the red pill. Right? You know what I mean? Just take the red pill. Convince people take the red pill. If they want to take blue pill, that's on them. You know, we can't really... It is what it is. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Right? Um, created by writer Chris Claremont and illustrator, co-writer John Byrne. The character first appeared in Uncanny X-Men 117, January 1979, as a telepathic mutant named Alm Farouk. Amal Farouk 
returns years later in New Mutants, number 34, revealed to be possessing karma since issue number 6. Later appearing throughout Uncanny X-Men, the character does not first refer to himself by the name of Shadow King until 265, August 1990. Extreme X-Men and X-Men True Friends develop, develop the Shadow King into actually being an entity, entity of the astral plane that has existed since the dawn of humanity. An ethereal demon preferring to enslave the bodies of powerful telepaths and psi sensitives and utilize their capabilities to enslave others to its whims. As a side effect of its greed, hedonism, and utter lack of self-control, the Shadow King's long-term telepathic hosts, hosts are often left morbidly obese. You don't want to mess with Shadow King, right? Even Shadow King took the red pill. And this is, this is just like Doctor Who, alien from some other planet, right? Alien from some other planet manifests on Earth, takes over somebody's body, and they decide, you know what? I think I'm going to add a fez to my wardrobe. Yeah, I'm going to add a fez to my wardrobe. That's going to be, that's going to be good. I'm going to add a fez to my wardrobe. You know? All, all the headwear out there or whatever, you know, and, he, and he's a bald head man, so it's not even like, you know, Fez is fitting or nothing like that. Just perch it on the top of the head and, you know, let's, let's, let's just, you know, let's do that like a baseball cap and let's just get out of here. Right? Shadow King. Right? X-Men, telling you. And don't forget, Professor X is Martin Luther King and Magneto is is Malcolm El Hajj right do your research on that if you don't know right X-Men is about us right don't even get it twisted they put down them that blue pill right there cause there's no need at all there's no need whatsoever for us to even play around with this, right? There's no need to play around with this, right? I'm gonna go in a little bit more on this thing right here, cause when 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 you're vibrating on the frequency of your ancestors, right? There's so much stuff out there on the Mars that we miss because we're looking for M O O R S. And we have to see M O R S or M U U R S. And if we don't see that, then um, you know, I didn't find anything about the Mars, right? This is X Men. In the fictional Marvel Universe, Moor Island, M U I R. Significance, significance stems from the fact that. The home of Earth's largest and most comprehensive mutant research complex, located to the north of Scotland, founded by Dr. Moira McTaggart. Born Moira Kinross to Scottish parents, Moira McTaggart was one of the world's leading authorities on genetic mutation, earning her a Nobel Prize for her work, etc., etc. Went to Oxford University, was also once Professor X's fiance and she has a son who's Prototheus who's an extremely destructive mutant and Moore's Island's facilities were created for her to cure her son right but it ended up being you know for all the mutants or whatever safe haven Moore Island right <laughs> Moore Island's facility holds a wealth of knowledge on various mutants their abilities and other mutant related issues and concerns it was also once the home base of the X-Men spin-off superhero team Excalibur. It was used by Professor X to store information on how to kill various X-Men if need be. The island has sometimes been used to imprison mutants for various reasons, notably Spore and Magneto. The island and its research center have come under attack by many villains, Magneto, Acolyte, Shadow King, Galactus, Phalanx, Reavers, Black Air, whatever, whatever. The island's facilities were destroyed by Legion, who was at the same time possessed by Shadow King during the Muir Island Saga. This team 
was called to life after the whole world believed the X-Men had died in Dallas, Texas. The team fought a few battles, most notably a battle against the mutant hunting mercenaries known as the Reavers. The Reavers had a mission to kill all the remaining Morlocks, whom still lived after the mutant massacre. Together, the team saved the day but with great losses. During the battle, fellow team member and son of Charles Xavier named Legion became inhabited by one of his evil personas. When the Reavers attacked Morlock children, Sunder managed to get away. Blah, blah, blah. Right? The Morlocks were a large community of mutants who felt they were outcasts. Living in the underground tunnels beneath New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, these tunnels were built in the 1950s by the U.S. government as shelters in case of a national emergency and later abandoned. The vast majority of the public had no idea these tunnels existed. There were numerous tunnels stretching out of sight, many explored. The main tunnel was 50 feet high and ran the length of Manhattan. It was called the Alley by its inhabitants. The Morlocks were outcasts and rebels against surface society who named themselves after subterranean creatures found in H.D. Wells' book, The Time Machine. Make sure you go read The Time Machine, H.D. Wells. They were found by Callisto, who discovered the tunnels and moved into them decades ago, shortly after they were abandoned. She enlisted the aid of Calbian finding the meter. Most Morlocks were hideous and deformed. Yet another reason for them to dwell away from society. When Professor Xavier offered to help resettle them on the surface, they declined because they felt the tunnels were the right place for them. This image of themselves is almost sub themselves as almost subhuman psychologically affected most Morlocks who felt frustrated, bitter, and vengeful about their situation. Most of the Morlocks were hunted down and murdered by a group of mutant assassins known as the Marauders. The majority of the Morlocks had survived, that survived, stayed with the X-Men. The Marauders began as a group of superpowered criminals working on behalf of the interests of the, the villain Mr. Sinister. A single candle will light his way, and we the colony, once named Morlocks, will never sup, nor sleep, nor scurry in darkness again. That's right. That's a quote from the Morlocks then. The quote from one of the Morlocks. A single candle will light his way, and we, the colony, once named Morlocks, will never sup, nor sleep, nor scurry in darkness again. Why? They took the red pill. They didn't take the blue pill. They took the red pill. And in them taking the red pill, they received that light. They received that light. Because Nobudrali did everything already. Right? Divine warning by the prophet. So we can know and be fairly, fairly sure. Sure enough. Right? We can be sure enough. After reading the divine warning about the position that Moors have to take. Right? And it's all going to be leading to not taking the blue pill. Right? So open your, open your minds on this. The citizens of all free national governments, according to their national constitution, are all of one family bearing one free national name. Those who fail to recognize the free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. Right? Now when we when we keep when we keep Juali in mind, 
right, in our in our studies, right. Once you keep Drali in mind, you'll be a lot more clear, right, about who's a more, what's a more, you know, should I go with these mores, shouldn't I go with these mores, right? So, when he's talking about the inferior names, etc., right, we have to remember, right, that the Moors have been given everything for them to free themselves. The Moors have been given everything to free themselves, right? So again, we're going to go to the 101 questionnaire, right? 101 questionnaire, okay? Questionnaire and additional laws for the Moorish Americans. Act 6. With us, all members must proclaim their nationality. And we are teaching our people <coughs> their nationality and their divine creed that they may know that they are part and parcel of this said government and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Nobujuali the prophet to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa. Right? Keep in mind, those who fail to recognize their free national name of their constitutional government are classed as undesirables and are subject to all inferior names and abuses and mistreatments that the citizens care to bestow upon them. So, the abuses and mistreatments that the citizens bestow on our people, that our people call racism and prejudice, etc., is because of them not having a nationality. Because if they had a free national name, they would not be subject to the inferior names and abuses and mistreatments. So that means all these things are piled onto each other. This is not a mesh of you know grievances that we're expressing this is stacked issues that we're dealing with right and it is a sin for any group of people to violate the national constitutional laws of a free national government and cling to the names and principles that delude to slavery a f it is a sin for any group of people any group of people so not just Moors people who want to call themselves white people right people who want to call themselves you know galactic beings and whatever then that they were taught by Pata and Pata is teaching them from the astral realm and whatever I, the prophet, was prepared, prepared by the great God Allah to warn my people, not to teach them, make them a follower, whatever like that. He came to warn them, warn us. Warn my people to repent from their sinful ways and go back to that state of mind of their forefathers divine and national principles that they will be law abiders and receive their divine right as citizens according to the free national constitution that was for all free national beings alright so free national beings have a free national name and based on 
the free national name of that free national being determines what jurisdiction they fall under. And the jurisdiction that the Moors fall under, that have a free national name, being that we're free national beings, is the free national constitution. Right? Now, the free national constitution for the republic, its jurisdiction is divine and national principles. But Noble Juali said that we will receive our divine rights according to the free national constitution. Not according to the Quran. Not according to the 101 questionnaire. Not according to some holy book or Moorish literature. We would receive our divine rights. Our divine rights. Not our earthly rights or whatever. We'll receive our divine rights. According to the free national constitution. That's why Nobu Juali said, study the constitution. Because your divine rights are there. Keep in mind that there's also a divine constitution and bylaws. Plus the additional laws, which is also part of the free national constitution demonstration. Right? And the free national constitution, the republic constitution, is divine because it was prepared by our foremothers and forefathers who were Sufis. So they were divine beings. They weren't earthly beings on some right stuff down on paper. They were on a high vibration that they got things from the ethers and decided to put certain things on parchment for people to have access to right just like Nobu Jwali was prepared by the great God Allah he wasn't prepared because he went to Egypt and he went to all these places and studied with people that's not how he was prepared that's the front to get all the people who want to play the follower or whatever to go chase after that and the wise people take the knowledge that he brought and apply it because it's applicable because it's a sin if you don't apply it that's according to what he said this is not what Moors are saying this is what Noble Juali is saying so it's to, it's to get out of the hole because it's prophet then you're going to connect that to other people out there that you might have heard been called prophet there's no correlation or relation to anybody when it comes to Noble Juali there's not him and then people lined up on him like how they do the unity picture and then they have Noble Jwali in the back corner behind a curtain. And then they have everybody else out there, you know what I mean, getting their pose on or whatever and then Noble Jwali is in the back next to some curtain. Right? They are to claim their own free national name and religion. There is but one issue for them to be recognized by this government and of the earth. And it comes only through the connection of the Moorish Divine and National Movement. Only. Only through the connection of the Moorish Divine and National Movement. Which is incorporated in this government and recognized by all other nations of the world and through it they and their children can receive their divine rights come back to rights again right and when he's talking about divine rights he's talking about birthrights unmolested by other citizens that they can cast a free national ballot at the polls under the free national constitution of the state's government and not under a granted privilege as has been the existing condition for many generations. Let's come back to the same thing we were talking about in class yesterday. That if we know by the fact that we say we slaves we came from Africa 
If I'm a slave and I came from Africa and my name is Johnson, then I know that's not my name. And I know that I got it from Slave Master. And if I know that that's not my name and that I got it from Slave Master, the next logical thing to do is to find out what your real name is and claim that. But we don't do that. We're going to make up names. We're going to go find some pharaohs that we didn't even know. Right? And we're going to call ourselves him. Faking because, you know, we have a license in our pocket that if we get stopped, we're given the license. We're not given nothing that says this name that we just made up from this guy that died a million years ago in Kemet and has, you know, a burial chamber. Right? So we call ourselves this individual. We don't know his life or anything, right? So we're fronting that this is our free name because, you know, we, we studied Dr. Ben and we studied John Henry Clark and Leonard Jeffries and, you know what I mean? They said that, well, that's what it, whatever. Uh, you never check what Noble Jolly said? Who came before those people? You never check what Noble Jolly said. Oh, you didn't even know that there's somebody named Noble Jolly. <laughs> well, better hold out on that blue pill. Because <laughs> if you never heard about Noble Jolly and you're ready to pop blue pill, you already lose. Already. Right? You who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people. Go to those that know law in the city hall and among the officials, not among the public servants, among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone and they will be glad to render you a flavorable reply. For they are glad to see me, the prophet, bring you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Right? Bringing you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Because we don't want to be Morlocks anymore. We want to be our free national being that we have a right to be. Money doesn't make the man. It is free national standards and power that makes a man and a nation. And remember, when you go back and you read chapter 7, pretty sure it's chapter 7, talking about truth and power and force and all that, right? Power is an illusion. So, money doesn't make the man. It's free national standards that make a man because power is an illusion. Makes a man and a nation. The wealth of all national governments, gold and silver and commerce, belong to the citizens alone. And without your national citizenship by name and principles, you have no true wealth. And I am hereby calling on all true citizens that stand for a national free government and the enforcement of the Constitution to help me in my great missionary work. Because I need all support from all true American citizens of the United States of America. Help me save my people who have fallen from the constitutional laws of the government. I am depending on your support to get them back to the constitutional fold again that they will learn to love instead of hate and will live according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Supporting our free national constitution of the United States of America. Right? For all the people who say Noble Jawali didn't teach civics and didn't teach law to the people he taught religion. Right? I love my people and I desire their unity and mine back to their own free national and divine standards because day by day they have been violating the national and constitutional laws of their government by claiming names and principles that are unconstitutional. If Italians, Greeks, English, Chinese, Japanese, Turks, and Arabians are forced to proclaim their free national name and religion before the constitutional government of the United States of America, it is no more than right 
that the law should be enforced upon all other American citizens alike. In all other governments, when a man is born and raised and asked for his descent name, and if he fails to give it, he is misused, imprisoned, or exiled. Any group of people that fail to answer up to the constitutional standards of law by name and principles because to be a citizen of any government you must to be a citizen of any government you must claim your national descent name because they place their trust upon issue and names formed by their forefathers keep your minds open the word Negro deludes in Latin language to the word nigger, the same as the word colored deludes to anything that is painted, varnished, and dyed. And every nation must bear a national descent name of their forefathers, because honoring thy forefathers and thy mothers, your days will be lengthened upon the earth. These names have never been recognized by any true American citizens of this day. Through your free national name, you are known and recognized. For all people who said, well, do, do they recognize the Moors' position? You know, is it recognizable? He's telling you in 1913 that it's going to be recognized if you claim it. If you don't claim it and it's just sitting there, why would somebody recognize it? Why would somebody recognize something unclaimed? The, the point of you claiming it is for them to recognize that you made that claim and in you making that claim whether you're dealing with garnishes whether you're dealing with traffic BS whether you're dealing with murder rape whatever ultimately it comes down to what's your free national name now if you have a free national name and you're raping and pillaging and murdering people then you know eye for an eye it's firing squad noose over there guillotine over there you know um whatever else we got right because government's role is to protect the people government's role isn't to take advantage of the people but if the people have no free national name then they leave their self open to be violated all abuses and mistreatments that the citizens who are the government officials and all those people dare to bestow on the people the 14th and 15th amendments brought the North and South in unit placing the southerners who were at that time without power with the constitutional body of power and at that time 1865 the free national constitution law that was enforced since 1774 declared all men free and equal and if all men are declared by the free national constitution which is the supreme law of the land to be free and equal and since the constitution has never been changed and it is the supreme law of the land then there is no need for application of 14th and 15th amendment for the salvation of our people and citizens remember 14th and 15th amendments of the salvation of our people implies that the free national constitution only has 10 amendments and 7 articles so you start talking about 14th, 15th Amendment, 13th Amendment, 20 sections and all that, you're still talking about a fraud. Because the only Constitution is the Constitution with 7 Articles and 10 Bill of Rights. That's the Constitution. And it's never been changed because that's the supreme law of the land. And there's no need for the application of the 14th and 15th Amendment because they're a fraud. Why? Because they're not part of the Constitution. They're part of later versions of the Constitution that there was no constitutional convention for them to even make these changes or whatever. Right? 
So there is but one supreme is so there isn't but one supreme issue for my people to use to redeem that which was lost, and that is through the above statements. Then the lion and the lamb can lie down together in yonder hills, and neither will be harmed, because love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice will be reigning in this land. In those days, the United States will be one of the greatest civilized and prosperous governments of the world. But, if the above principles are not carried out by the citizens and by my people in this government, the worst is yet to come, which is here right now. Because the great God of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in North America by my people. You know, it's South America. We're not talking about Moors all over the world. We're talking about the great God of the universe is not pleased with the work being done by Noble Drali's people in North America. That means Allah is all right with what everybody else is doing in the world why because they all have free national names and they honor their foremothers and forefathers even if they do devilish stuff and we're the only people well not we but dark-skinned people who have no knowledge of their nationality and birthright and always want to go you know to run for a blue pill because they don't want to deal with this reality that taking the blue pill is putting you in the reality that you don't want to deal with so why you take the red pill and start moving in that direction the great god of the universe is not pleased with the works that are being performed in north america by my people and this great sin must be removed from the land to save it from enormous earthquakes diseases etc and I, the prophet, do hereby believe that this administration of the government, more wisely prepared and by more genius citizens that believe in their free national constitution and laws and through the help of such classes of citizens, I, the prophet, truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way to their forefathers, way of their forefathers, and learn to stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of man that have never done them any good but have always harmed them so I the prophet am hereby calling aloud with a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me remove this great sin by which has been committed and is being practiced by my people in the United States of America that's where they get the jurisdiction from to kick your ass when you're black and Negro and colored and you wonder why is it that we're the only ones going through this because Noble Jolly came 1913 told you proclaim your nationality you didn't do it because sell out nigger Moors want you to think that Noble Jolly came talking some religion or whatever and you already know you want nothing to do with religion because what Christianity did to you so you're gonna cast away Noble Jolly cast away Christianity cast away Islam cast away and your new religion is consciousness and I'm conscious black consciousness or whatever and still hanging on to that slave label that Noble Drew Ali said in 1913 get rid of and we're still using it today in in this time right so the jurisdiction that these people get to do stuff to us is because the prophet is calling aloud with a divine plea to all true American citizens to help me to remove this great sin which has committed there's no true American citizens everybody's corporate and the only true American citizens are in a jurisdiction where they have their own grass to cut and they're not coming to North America to come cut more grass when they got their own grass to cut embargoes and all these type of things that they're dealing with in their own jurisdiction so the Europeans are taking the position of those so-called true Americans that don't want to be their self right and they're getting rid of this sin in the United States of America and they got King Alfred plan like we said in the beginning for that too and other stuff that they're using FEMA camps jails and all that because they know it is not the true and divine way and without understanding they have fallen from the true light into utter darkness of sin and there is no nation on earth today 
that will recognize them socially, religiously, politically, economically, militarily, etc. In their present condition of their endeavorment, in which they themselves try to force upon a civilized world, they will not refrain from their sinful ways of action, and their deeds have brought Jim Crowism, segregation, and everything that brings harm to human beings on earth. Human beings on earth are being harmed because of the Moors not doing what they're supposed to do. Want to do everything else. Debate each other, talk crap about each other. Yeah, we were going to debate Lord Abba, but we weren't debating Lord Abba on debate principles. We were debating him to get information to the people so they can, you know, gather around, see the debate, and when they gather around, we got another thing for you guys. It was nothing to do with him. He was our bait. Right? And then and then he backed out. After he's the one that called it. Showing you. Trying to force their uncivilized position on a civilized world. Right? Boy, we want to debate people and then back out of debate. And they fought the southerner for all these great misuses. But I have traveled in the south and have examined conditions there and it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace and disrespect to any nation that lives the life and it is the works of my people continuously practicing the things which bring dishonor, disgrace and disrespect to any nation that lives the life and I am hereby calling on all true American citizens for moral support and finance to help me in my great missionary work to bring my people out of darkness into marvelous light. And for those clowns that always talk about, well, no Joel is asking for finance. So because he's asking for finance, doesn't that mean that he's... You know what a prophet is? You need to go look up prophet and consider better giving him your finance than everybody else that you give finance to. People who you got conveyance from, you gave them finance. They haven't done nothing for you. People you get gas from, they haven't done nothing for you. People that we pay rent to, mortgage to, people who we go buy land from to go make, you know, gardens and whatever like that. They haven't done nothing for you. So why not give the funds to the prophet? Because like the prophet said, if you don't give it to him, he's going to get it anyway. Or it's just going to burn up in your pocket and you still can't use it. That's no good draw these words. So the choice is on you this is your nationality and your birthrights divine rights it's yours nobody can't own it there's been ample amount of videos or whatever that we've done before this date to prove to people that they're Moors and it's clearly obvious that there's only going to be a handful of our people saved and there's going to be fingers left over so this is the last show and tell class right if you haven't go out there get your law dictionaries and your you know your things of that nature we're going to start getting into writs and writing writs and we're going to have you know people on the phone right that have you know information stuff to say or whatever with regard to their situations that they've been dealing with if you got um situations out there that you're dealing with and you're kicking these people's asses with writs or with talking to them on the phone or you know you're doing some type of process that has nothing to do with filing and paying anybody anything but you're utilizing processes that work that could assist the people with this madness that they're going through shut down governments and all that Make sure you get at CanaanLandGuide at gmail.com with name, phone number, and we'll call to set up when we could do our little discourse on the Ustream, get some other people involved with this that we know are out there beating up this beast, you know, and start getting the information to the people that way, right? And don't be surprised if we have, you know, some surprise, some surprise guests, you know, that just happen to be in class you know starting next week so islam to all the moors you know what i mean for straight up it's all about red pill right you know we'll we'll, we'll deal with some some um 
oatmeal, you know, for a little bit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We'll deal with some oatmeal, you know. Islam to all the active Moors, um, for all the Moors out there that are coming into the movement, there's a lot being done that you don't know about, so don't be discouraged. There's Moors doing things all over the country that we don't know about, right? For whatever reason, they're quiet and we're not hearing about it, but don't be fooled into thinking that, you know, people aren't paying attention to what we're doing, right? Don't be fooled. Don't think people aren't watching what we're doing, right? I know out of all those 200 views, right, they got some people in those views that are taking notice of what's going on. Like I, like I was saying in the class, if, if Brother Fonteus L., could call me and you know tell me about yeah he saw Kane and Landmore's class talking about this thing and he found something and then send me some information to back up what we're doing if brother Taj and nature and you have all these moors all over the country calling me on the phone and all that that means words getting out that means that Aquarian age right now you know like when we talk about when we talk about you know, um, are people waking up, you know, like, don't, don't think you're waking up is going to be, um, you know, a cup of water, you know, throw it on your face, you know what I mean, like, you know, we're, we're, we're throwing you off falls into, you know, like, that's, that's what you're getting, you know, you're not getting no cup of water, right, we're going in a boat, just like when they taught me to swim, you know, they take you in a boat back in Tobago, right? They don't go to no pool and deep end, shallow end or whatever. They take you in a boat and they take you out in the ocean and they throw you off the boat and they tell you make your way to shore. And they drive back to, they ride back to the shore in the boat and they wait on the shore for you. That's how we learn to swim in Tobago. So that's what's going on right now with the Aquarian Age. You're getting dumped into this. Whether you want it or not, that's just what, that's just what it is. So once again, Islam to the Moors, keep, keep, keep keeping. Don't worry about, well, you know, we need to get all these Moors on. Just, just keep in mind, just keep in mind, right, the story about Noah and all these people not listening to him and arcs getting built and they're not listening in. they're over there you know lemonade and you know barbecue chicken and jerk chicken and whatever you know and you build in the ark and they're over there you know basketball game and let's go to the club and you know what i mean let's have fun and let's have this and let's do that and whatever you know and it starts raining a little bit and you know, they ain't worried about that you know because they're saved and God has their back because they went to church every Sunday and, and they went to the mosque and they went to the synagogue and they went to the temple and whatever and then they got water up to their neck and they worry about that because you know I can still breathe I can just go like this and I can still breathe the water up on my neck and then they're banging on the door and and they're banging on the door and they're banging on the door you know because now the water's over their head you know what I mean? And, and the doors, you know, down there. So, you have no choice but to perish because you took the blue pill. When you should have, as soon as you seen brother building up the whatever, you should have been there supporting it financially, right? Like Sister Annie said, well, you know what? I came into consciousness, I took all the credit cards that I had, and I just bought books with them all. And then send some risks to those people that, you know, you know you're not getting nothing for this. You know, because she could choose to do that because it's her birthright. You know, I'm not saying go out there, go do that. And then Kujo said, just like Brother Abdullah said, if you're saying Kujo said, then that means you're not studying. Islam, Moors, study, study, study. Close out with the prayer. And get, oh yeah, and don't forget, um, Moorish Holy Temple of Science, Eyes Wide Open blog talk at 9.30. So... You know, you got about 20 minutes, get your whatever you got to get, you know what I'm saying, and be on the blog talk, because 
I'm co-hosting with them right now too, you know, so we're keeping it moving. Five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe, Father of Love, Truth, Peace, Freedom, and Justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation by night and by day to his holy prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Islam. Islam. Peace, Moors. We got this. And again, Islam to all the Moors in, in the chat. Peace and love.